Are you guys ready for a night of adventure? Yeah. Yeah. A night of excitement? Yeah. Uh -huh. A night filled to the brim with endless possibilities? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Well, too bad, because today we're watching Ewoks, episode four, <laughs> oh. to save Deej. Oh, well, okay. That, that, that works, too. Hew the intro. I like your music. It sounds like Donkey Kong. Yeah, I definitely was going for that. It's a mixture of that and the second season theme song. The first season oh, theme right. song is horrible. So I was going to try to make a song to it. <laughs> oh, I never, I never listened to the second season theme song. Yeah, season two is all different. Yeah. All new. I think they called it the all new Ewoks. They like look different too. Oh. Well, we have how many episodes till we get there? Oh, only ten or so. Nine. Woo, only nine episodes. Oh, okay, okay. That's not so bad. So this uh, this episode came out on September 28th, 1985. It aired the same time as, or not, not exactly the same time, but as A Race to the Finish. Do you guys remember that one? Oh, yeah. That's the speeder race of droids. That's right. That was the Bunta speeder race. Hmm. With um, Boba Fett, who could forget that? Were there any any thematic parallels between the two? No. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I would think the makers of this shows would be doing all kinds of uh, subtle connections between mm -hmm. their uh, pairs of episodes. The same company, did they do both the Ewoks and Droids? Yeah, Nelvana, a Canadian animation studio. Okay. Maybe different people, though, in the company. I don't yeah. know. I mean, they, they look different. Depends on how far ahead they got to work on them. Well, what did you guys think of this episode? Or maybe we should do a summary first. Oh, wait. I'm Cody. Oh, I'm Aaron. I'm Daniel. And together we're... Saving Deej. Oh. Oh, yeah, that too. Saving Private Deej. <laughs> That's right. This is the most grittiest episode of Ewoks. I'll go get the feather. You can get... I'm not doing with the Dandelion thing. That thing was crazy. <laughs> I'll get I'll no. get the uh, I'll get the little weird egg things or whatever. Right. Okay, fine. I'll get the star urchin. The Dandelion Warrior. Scary. Yeah, there's some dandelion. But you've got this. help from that. Uh... Okay. Well, anyway, um, from that that little guy. <laughs> I can give a summary. The summary is, uh, Wicket's dad gets infected by some kind of fungus, and he's gonna die. His soul is going to die. So, uh, <clears throat> they need these ingredients to make some magic potion and save him. So that's the episode. Wicket and his two brothers split up to find these three different ingredients, and um. They don't do it. They, their dad dies. They don't do it in time. What? So. Oh my goodness. You saw a different episode yeah, than I saw. Yeah. You saw the uncut yeah. version. The director's yeah, cut. Yeah, director's cut. You know, I, I thought it would be more an, an emotional impact to have him die. Um, yeah, that's the episode. Yeah. Get into it some more. They save him. Yeah, he does not die. This is a kid's show. I mean, I, that would probably happen in any show, but... Well, I mean, there's some brutal kid shows out there. Yeah, right. I mean, look at uh, Battle for Endor. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so speaking of Battle for Endor, that little Teak yeah. guy was, I don't know if it was Teak, but it was one of his peoples. I thought it was him until like the end of the episode. They called him. Um, yeah, he says, who's this? Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello? Hello? Oh. Oh, good one. <laughs> but this says he's a goopin. Yeah. I don't, what is a goopin? I don't think he's actually a teak creature. I don't think he is because teak is, could run really fast. But as far as I know, teak could morph into whatever type of animal he wants, which, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the episode. He can morph yeah. into any animal he wants. Pretty much, but <laughs> reveals he has this incredible power to transform into any yeah shape shifting abilities. It says on the Wikipedia <laughs> <Good stuff. laughs> Well, what what is Teak then? He is a Teak. That's what we. What? Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah. They look very similar though. And this guy's a Goopin. Yeah. All right. Well, I thought it was him. Yeah, it's just this random guy that is unexplained. Wicked just 
meets him in the woods. He's hiding in the bushes for some reason. His, uh, who is it? Uh, Tebow. Tebow asks, who is this? And like, where did he come from? And, <laughs> and Wicked just says, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> no explanation. Not really. He just found him in the woods. Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to get And more they were fast friends. Of yep. The end. Yeah. But uh, Deej, yeah. who is um, Wicked and, oh, what's his brother's name? Uh, Weechi his, and his oldest brother is Weechi, and then the middle one is Willie. The dumb one. And then one. Wicket. The dumb one is Willie. Yeah. yeah. Well, his, his his name is actually Whittle, but his nickname is Willie. Apparently. Okay. Uh, that sounds more like an Ewok name, I guess. But um, yeah, they have to go and save their dad by getting three different things. I guess. Yeah, Low Gray gives them this uh, psychedelic poem. Oh yeah. About how they have to go and get all these items and i don't really know yeah they had to get a star urchin from the land of the dandelion warriors a lantern mm-hmm. bird feather and some eggs um from a forsh yeah. <laughs> a, a forsh there's lots of cool creatures in this one there was <laughs> like uh so at the beginning they're fishing as ewoks do and uh there's like they catch this giant fish like holy crap you see that <laughs> That thing's scary. Like they're trying to reel it in. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> this it's like just this nasty. It's a big gooba fish, pretty much. Yeah, big gooba, <laughs> gooba fish. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like as tall as a e- Ewok, and then if you lay him down, it's probably like four or five Ewoks. Yeah, big. Just to give the audience some comparison. That's how we measure things. I'd say it's about four or five Ewoks. Yeah, yeah, give or take. Um, but then this fungus. I mean, all like his dad just falls backwards into the fungus because uh, they lose the fish; it gets away, mm-hmm. um, and he just falls back into this fungus. And it's like some kind of like metallic razor blade fungus on the side of this tree, bright blue. Yeah, but it's like super sharp. Looks like saw blades. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought that was kind of nuts. So, and and it's just on; it's just there on this tree, on right tree. by where they were fishing. Yeah. Like, if this stuff is that deadly, they should know, and they should be. Like, they should know to watch out for it. It must be pretty rare, because mm-hmm. is it Low Gray, the wizard? Mm-hmm. He says he's only seen it once before, an infection. Oh, yeah. well, okay. I don't know. They've never been to this fishing spot then before? I don't know. But he knows just what to do with it is voodoo magic. <laughs> but he, he, like, tells them this poem about all the things they need, and while he's speaking, uh, we, the audience, get to see this crazy, like, lights and shapes changing and seeing the the outlines or like the silhouettes of the of the things we have to go and find the lantern bird and the yeah it's like this things. roar shark ink blot oh, yeah. m- moving ink blot thing some yeah. pretty trippy animation pretty cool uh, yeah i liked it uh oh yeah and um so what's <laughs> his name the- willie willie just starts drinking out of this cauldron <laughs> Right? Because that's the first thing you do. I guess it smelled good. I don't know. But it's the thing from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I thought. Fizz, is fizzy lifting drink, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just floats up to the ceiling. Yep. And he's like, he's like um, hiccuping bubbles yeah. out of it. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Little Grey got the recipe from Willy okay. Wonka okay. himself. Or maybe he invented it first. This guy's name is Willy. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. Everything copied the, these early cartoons. <laughs> so obviously their their answer is to tie some weights around him so he doesn't quite fly away. He's got rocks tied around his waist. Just floating along behind them like a balloon. Wow. It's so dangerous. Like if he lost those rocks, he would just be up into the sky and just well, right. gone. So, so here. He... And he's like that for most of the episode. Yeah, yeah. He is tasked to get the feather of the lightning bird or lantern mm-hmm. bird so he finds where the lantern bird nest is and he's trying to climb the tree but he's like struggling so he just takes the rocks off of his that are tied on him that he just floats up the tree like yeah like i was like this is pretty risky he manages to grab a branch but like yeah if he didn't grab that branch he'd, he'd be gone he'd be a goner oh it just keeps floating off and into the sky He'd float into the sky, then he'd probably end up suffocating up there, and then it would wear off, and he'd fall down, and if he's not already dead, he'd clearly die. Yeah. <laughs> he's not already dead. <laughs> he First Ewok in space. 
<laughs> You're right. So as he's grabbing the feather out of the nest, the big old lantern bird comes back. Just lands on him. Sitting on her eggs. He's trapped. Kind of looks like a very, very large pink swan with a long tail that lights up. Yeah, its mm-hmm. tail is is a lantern. Like it would, I mean, it, it looks like a lantern. Mm-hmm. Very glowy. Yeah, so uh, Willie's busy doing that. Well, let's... Wicket is... Or what? I want to I want to read about the lantern bird. Let's see what this is all about. See if there's anything interesting. Uh, the birds are often eaten by dewlocks, apparently. Wow. Hmm. Ewoks considered them magical. Feathers were used for medicinal potions. Great. All good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Seems well enough disposed toward the Ewoks. Yeah. Later on, they go looking for Willie because he's... Just been stuck under the bird since that scene. Yeah. So they go they go and find him at the end, and uh, I don't know. The bird's not super excited to no, see them. Surprised. But it, yeah. That he's been under there for so long. He's been under there for hours. Yeah, he must not have been trying too hard to get out. <laughs> like dying from suffocating from the heat. and. <laughs> I think he was just taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, he seemed, I don't know. He seemed like he was just hanging out there. Man, Wicked goes in search of the star urchin or something like that. Yeah. And the... Land of the Dandelion Warriors, and holy crap, man, this part was crazy. So freaky. Yeah, you think dandelions are calm and peaceful, but not so much on Endor. These things have giant spikes, and they are alive, and they will shoot their spikes at you. They're super creeping. But yeah, he just walks up to the, the this field, and he finds his little friend that he had been playing with earlier, um, the shapeshifter guy. Ring, ring. Ring, ring, yeah. Hello? And he's all and he's Hello? all tied up to a tree stump. Yeah. So the uh the Wik- the Wookiee article says that the dandelion warriors warriors were semi sapient, you know. Oh my gosh. Did you see what they're called? <laughs> I'm not pronouncing that. <laughs> uh they're called dandelion warriors. We're gonna go with that. <laughs> they're called <laughs> What? How do you spell this? F F T S S F F T. <laughs> yep but yeah it's like they're semi-intelligent and they're really creepy things oh they're so creeping yeah and so apparently they caught this this guy and tied him to a tree uh, for some reason unknown reasons for target practice apparently <laughs> or target. well no because no he i mean he was trying to help the ewoks by going to get the the star urchin well right and these things just don't want people in their territory i think yeah but they tie him up to a tree in their territory so what's the point of that like just chase him away oh good point or kill him or something you know? but... they're using him as target That's, practice yeah. he says. oh he, he does say that okay and he is surrounded by these uh spines that they shoot oh my goodness the article for the is <laughs> quite long really what do we what do we know about them? They possess their own language. So uh, you can tell me in a second, but yeah. So Wicket uh, comes along and saves them, and then they uh, they're like, "There's two of us now, so one of us can distract these guys." Which that guy does because he's super fast, like Teak, and uh, and Wicket finds a star urchin which i don't even really know what it is he just finds it on a tree yeah there's no article on the star urchin there's not a lot about it. <laughs> nothing really to it it's just uh, some kind of flower or i couldn't tell what if it was a what it was yeah, yeah. i mean an urchin is a sea creature mm-hmm. spiny sea creature this thing is like a flower on a tree so a sea urchin so a star urchin would live in a star. There you go. But it doesn't. But man, these things are like, they'll give you nightmares. They're like these creepy crow face looking guys mm-hmm. with these giant spiky afros. Yeah. And just <laughs> giant they, long insect They arms. whip their heads. They head bash and uh, send send their spines flying. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. It's just like, the dandelion warrior used his head whiplash. Yep. It wasn't very effective. No, because they miss every shot. <laughs> yeah. And they needed that They do not right. know how to lead. <laughs> right. They feel like something you'd fight in an old Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> random made up enemies. Yeah, yeah. Like the hammer thrower. You just got to watch out for those spikes and get under them. I don't know why that is what I'm thinking. I, I would play a, a side scrolling Ewok game. <laughs> I wonder if there is one. Oh. <clears throat> you were looking up all the games a while ago, Dan. Yeah. So. Star urchin. This there is so the star urchin quill. I don't know why it's called that, but it Logray actually says 
that they need a star-shaped quill from one of the dandelion warriors. He doesn't say a oh. star urchin. And and the star urchin quills says it's the name given to the venomous quills of the f- 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 species. <laughs> so I think it's like certain quills were star-shaped, and that's the ones they needed. Because hmm. I think that's he, they actually like yeah, because he got shot at them. Shoot their quills into the tree, and then he takes it out of the, off the tree. So it was just oh. one of the quills. Very strange. Did not realize that. Okay. Did you find anything cool about those dandelion guys? Nothing too crazy. It, it mostly just kind of repeated itself a little oh. bit. But um, it was mentioned in some book called Tales of the Wheel or something. Do you know what the wheel is? The wheel? It's like a giant uh, casino space station, I think. <laughs> Oh, okay. But apparently there was gladiator fights there, and they would have a couple of these dandelion warriors fight. The marvelous huh. wheel. <laughs> the marvelous wheel. That's really cool. Looks like Deep Space Nine. That's what I was picturing in my head when you're describing it. <laughs> yeah, it says that the fit, fit language is uh, produced its hissing sounds by forcing air through tiny pores in their vegetal bodies. Jeez. Wow. May have this awful high-pitched screech that they make. They are terrifying. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyhow. Here's the quill opening up. You can see it. You see it? Oink. Oh. oh. It opens up. Interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Unfurls into a star. Also, I, I like Ring Ring's face here when he's trying to distract them. Like, oh my gosh. Kind of like serial mascot is this. <laughs> like the, <Right? laughs> what did see the... Straight out of Lucky Charms. No. He feels like one of those kind of guys. Kind of looks like a cross between Captain Crunch. No, what was that crazy cinnamon thing? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Is that who it was for? I don't remember what the mascot was. Well, like some creature that was trying to get it or something. That's not what I want. This thing. <laughs> oh. Oh, that looks familiar now. What is the? Was there a game? Oh, I don't know. With him in it? There might have been. <laughs> what was this thing called? Slaz? No. It's like this giant fluff ball with a creepy face. He's what, like Cinnamon Toast Crunch mascot from the 90s? Or was that what cereal he was for? Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Yeah. Okay. I do remember that guy. Yeah, he looks, Ring Ring looks like that. (laughs) Just like that. Especially when he's trying to distract the Dandelion Warriors and his his eyes are totally bugging out like this guy. (laughs) That is a scary thing. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. I thought he looked like something and I couldn't place it, but I think that's... There you go. Good stuff. And the oldest brother here? Yeah, Weechi. He's out uh, hunting a, a frosh egg. Is that it? Yeah. Or a forsh? Frosh. Uh, something. Like a Porsche, but forsh. 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 Um, and those things were creeping, too. They yeah, they, they were cool. I liked them. Were they in one of the Ewok movies? No. I felt like I'd seen one before. No. Well, he climbs up the waterfall trying to get their egg. There was some kind of scaly monster, and I thought that they show like a claymation thing for a little bit. I feel like. Yeah, that's what it was. I was remembering yeah, something. I anyway, I, I don't know if it was the same creature. The music was kind of cool in this segment. It just felt different from uh, the rest of the Ewok music. Oh, yeah, they had that uh, like a like a flute of some kind, African flute. Mm. Hmm. or Native American. I don't know what. Like when he's climbing up the waterfall more. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I don't know what that instrument is. A flute. Yeah, it's not a, it's not just a regular flute though. It's like Like a pan flute or something. Yeah, like a pan flute. Anyway, so it has, it has a different feel. You got the waterfall sound the whole time in the background and you got that thing. It feels like he's out in the real wilderness. Was it Latara playing the flute? Right. (laughs) Yeah, right. She's like just around the corner playing it. No. Um, anyway, yep, so that's cool. He finds their cave and doesn't really find an egg. They all, like, a bunch of eggs stick to him somehow. Yeah, they're like spider I don't know what eggs. That's about. Yeah, then the, the creeping six-legged salamander guys chasing after him. Oh yeah, he gets totally surrounded. He has to escape by jumping into the river and then goes over the waterfall. Just hanging onto a branch until, uh, his brothers come looking for him, uh, to rescue him. This is pretty clever. They get a rope and they wrap it around a stick so they can reach out and give him the rope. Like, yeah, that's what you would actually do. That's smart. <laughs> right? 
It's not like Mace, where they would just climb up and let it rope down <laughs> that was already up there with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is real. This is survival 101. Oh, yeah. No, I, I love it when the Ewoks are showing their survival skills. Cause that's definitely what they excel at. Um, so the whole gang of them all get chased by those froshes. Mm -hmm. and uh they're like surrounded what are we gonna do until little ring ring says oh actually by the way i have a special talent well they they get (laughs) they get chased up onto the top of devil's tower here (laughs) and then yeah yeah, like a mesa of something yeah yeah i mean that's just like like, anamorphs thing where it's just like well Ring, (laughs) ring ring says oh yeah i forgot i have this special power he just decides to mention now what they have to do is like all imagine some kind of imagine what they want him to turn into somehow. Probably magic. We can assume like he can't do it by himself, but yeah. if he's got enough mental energy coming from other people like that, that can do it. Positive vibes. <laughs> yeah. So they're all thinking real hard, and then he turns into this bird thing. Yeah, just a giant bird. I mean, that was lucky. Flies <laughs> him right back to the Ewok village. Just in time. It's like, how do we want him to get out of this situation? <laughs> yeah, the writers wrote themselves into a corner, and they're just like, uh, uh, this guy can be a bird. <laughs> yeah. We get back just in time to save Deej. Huzzah. Somebody was tripping on Ewok medicine when they wrote that. So part. they just pour it all over his body, and he wakes up and doesn't remember what happened. He's just fine. Yep. Happy ending. Yep. Oh my gosh. Everybody's so happy. They're all jumping just on dog him. pile on him. Yeah. The end. Yep, that was episode four. They saved Deej. They did. And they did. The question about whether or not they were going to be able to do it, they, it's, it's answered. They did. They did. <laughs> well, what'd you guys think? Uh, it was fine. Yeah. Fun to see different places, I yeah, guess. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of different landscapes on Endor that we're seeing. <clears throat> it's not really a forest moon at all. <laughs> As we saw in the other movies. Yeah. It's a moon that has a forest right. on it. Yeah, there's tons of stuff on this place. Deserts and prairies like the Dandelion Warrior Prairie and yeah. waterfalls. All the crazy mountains. monsters that there are. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I think Ecologically for diverse. this show, this is pretty decent episode. Okay, so uh, would you give it a, a yub or a nub? Uh, can I give it like a... <laughs> <laughs> two-thirds of a yub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two-thirds just, of just a yub. Just a yub. I'll give it a, I'll give it a full yub. Cause yeah, let's give it a full yub. I, I thought it was decent. It was interesting anyway. Yeah, I, I feel like of all the ones we've watched so far, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a full yub. So there you have it, folks. It's a two and two-thirds yub from <laughs> Star Wars Total Rewatch. Not quite a triple yub, but pretty close. See if anything can beat this. I need to remember I'm rating these based on uh, Ewoks episodes, yeah. not comparing them to Star Wars films. <laughs> Compared to what we've seen so far in this show. I would be surprised if any of them break a single yub. <laughs> if we go overall. There's just one episode in the middle that's super epic and <laughs> better than all other Star Wars. <laughs> better than every combined. movie combined. Well, that would be great, but I... Don't quite think that's going to be the case. You can hope. One can hope. One can hope. Uh, but instead of that, next week we get the traveling Jindas. Yes, yeah. right. I mean, maybe that's going to be super awesome. I don't know what Jindas are. I watched it. Do you want to know? I watched part of it. Sure. The Jindas are a traveling circus performing troupe. There you go. That makes me want to just <laughs> go ahead and jump right into that one. In fact, let's go do that right now, guys. Let's go watch it. Okay. And you can join us, too. Go ahead and watch it. And And then meet us back here on Star Wars Total Ewoks. Total Ewoks. Total Ewoks. Huzzah. Yup, nub, everyone. Goodbye. (laughs) 